I'm Dennis, Developer Advocate at United Manufacturing Hub. In this very short video, I'm going to highlight the concept of an automation pyramid and how it relates to the unified namespace. So the automation pyramid is really a data representation that organizes your manufacturing data and data systems of a plant. It follows the ISA 95 standard, which means that nearly all plants in the world will follow this similar structure. And the idea is that it forms a bridge between OT or operational technology and IT, where on the bottom levels, levels zero and one especially, most of the data and the equipment really belongs to the realm of OT. We have sensors and PLCs, machine data, and then the higher up the stack you go towards level three and four, you're essentially operating in the realm of IT. And in the middle is where those two worlds essentially come together. And it's important to note that the automation pyramid was designed for process control. It was not designed for data analytics. And we will see why in the following four problems. First of all, you always have a data and aggregation loss in the pyramid. This means that, for instance, your PLC commonly produces data at 20 millisecond frequency, but by the time this data reaches your upper systems, it would have been aggregated. For example, by minute or by second in the historian, or even worse, by batch number in the MES system. So you lose all the intermittent information because it has been averaged. The second problem is that you have firewall barriers. These are necessary because you're dealing with production equipment, especially at level zero. So your data can actually influence how machines move in the physical world, which is why you need a lot of security about who can access those machines and who can't. Well, in practice for data analytics, this means that your data scientist can only get access to PLCs, often by actually going to the physical process and connecting his laptop there, instead of jumping through a lot of um, networks. So a third problem that we have is that the fact that the automation pyramid consists of five separate layers is that you have integration hurdles. Imagine you're building an application that requires data from the MES system, but also some data from the historian, so from level two, and maybe some additional sensor. Well, this means that your app will have to connect three times to your automation pyramid to each of those separate layers, which greatly increases the time of development. And finally, you have transmission inefficiencies. And that's because we have the difference between OLTP databases and OLAP databases, where the former are more meant for transactions. For example, your level four and level three systems are meant to quickly write data but they are not designed to process large chunks of data as often happens in analytics where you calculate, for instance, an average over a month or you process half a year of data. So even if you would be able to route all your data upwards towards from level zero to level four, your level three and level four systems will not be able to handle that large data flow. So how does the unified namespace um, address this problem? Well, we have to distinguish between two views. The more American view proposed by Walker Reynolds says that in the end, we're going to replace the automation pyramid by the unified namespace, which becomes your ultimate source of truth and the main system on which your entire business runs. Now in, the Euro in Europe, especially at the UMH, we are a more conservative view in the sense that we will want to keep separating process control and data analytics, where process control will be done by the automation pyramid and all the responsibilities of big data processing and analytics, we will move to the unified namespace. We do this by connecting both systems and by reading in all the data from the various levels into the unified namespace. If you want to know more about how this data flow is organized in reality, I would recommend to watch the video I linked below where I explain which data lands on the NTPT brokers. There's also a data flow in the opposite direction. So from the unified namespace towards the automation pyramid. 
Now, this data flow is more risky in the sense that it could potentially influence the production process, which is why additional security measures must be implemented. Finally, the unified namespace in essence only contains a snapshot of your business with the latest data. So the question arises, where do we save the historical data coming in the unified namespace? And for that, we will either save this data in the historian locally in the plant. This is what the UMH also offers. Or we can choose to write this data to a data warehouse or a data lake somewhere in the cloud. So I hope this clarifies the automation pyramid and how it interacts with the unified namespace in a sense that we will not replace, uh, that the unified namespace doesn't replace the automation pyramid. If you want to know more about how the unified namespace is um, built, I have, we have a video about the five UNS basics here linked above, where we go through each component of the unified namespace. As always, I will link the two discussed articles below in the description. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.